Many thanks for joining us. I am Rita Omodia. On our first story, the state of well-being of the African child is one that leaves much to be desired. The narrative is often one of bruised emotions and horrific stories. In this report, John Felix examines what the African child goes through daily and how this situation can be salvaged. These children in their teenage years are already fending for themselves. At age 16 and 15 respectively, they trek around major cities in Abeokuta metropolis of Ogun State, working to make ends meet. They have trekked long distances, looking stressed and worn out, all in a bid to make a livelihood for their families. In Nigeria, efforts to protect children in some parts of the country are challenged by situations of violence insurgency, particularly in the Northeast. Children in their hundreds are abducted, fall victims of sexual violence, child labor, and are oftentimes denied access to humanitarian assistance. Their basic and fundamental rights to education and health are threatened by attacks on schools and hospitals. I caught up with some underage children in a chat with them, they opened up on why they have resorted to street hawking as an alternative means of livelihood. When I come back from school in the afternoon at 2 o'clock, I eat, I do my assignments, I do the work of the act. Then I help my mother for this. And when I help my mother for this, I will go back home and I will eat and I will sleep and I will wake back for another day for school. So how old are you? I'm 15 years old. Sorry? 15 years old. 15 years. Yes. Okay. Um, do you also have friends in, in the same class with you that also do this to help their parents? Yes. Like how many of them? Like two. two. What do they also say? Some sell pure some sell bread. Government should empower our parents so that my friend and me, we should not be off the street. Do you like what you're doing? Mm -hmm. When I come back from school, and my mom said that I should bring, I should go and pay for food and arrange it and do meat and, and sell it. I'm going to sell it. So whenever you come outside, how many hours do you normally spend outside on the road to do this? Like two, two hours. Two hours. I, I normally uh, spend two hours. Because there's no money. That is why my mom used uh, my mom said I should be selling this food. But if you have money, I will not sell it. You won't do it, right? Yes. This year, the day of the African child is held under the theme Leave No Child Behind for Africa's Development. While sustained growth in great parts of the continent has led to sizable advances for children, the boys and girls growing up in countries affected by armed conflict continue to lag behind. Yet, undeterred, children agencies such as Therese de Zom and the Child Protection Network say this year's celebration is positioned to address the gap. So this year we're saying leave no child behind. It does not matter the status of the child. Once the child is an African child, he has to be involved in our plan for the development of Africa. And particularly we want to draw attention to the issue of migrant children, children on the move within the West African region, that they also are important and that we do not only have risks in their movement, there are opportunities and we should ensure that these children have um, access to these development opportunities wherever they are found. This year we're also trying to focus on ensuring our children participate in developmental issues, not just because um, we just uh, want, um, not because we want them to participate, but because uh, they are the ones to take over from us when we, when, I mean, when the elders finally leave the scene. So as a result of that, there is need for African child to be engaged, fully engaged, uh, because uh, the way an African child is born it's not different from the way an, a child from the Europe or from the America is born. In consolidating this year's team, the target is expected to focus on those children who are not benefiting from Africa's growth and development. These advocates say governments can do more in formulating policies 
that will be relevant to the Nigerian child. There's a lot of ground to cover in terms of child protection generally in Nigeria. Um, the laws are there, but we also need to now step them down into policies that will be relevant to the life um, of the average Nigerian child. We, we, we know that there's still a lot for government to do and to, um, to a large extent, um, the government has not really, really met up to expectation com compared with um, what um, uh, we have signed, uh, looking at the various documents, the promises the government has made in international um, since international events, and even looking at the uh, treaties that we have also signed, which seeks to promote the right of children. Going forward, every African child deserves the chance to develop to its full potential. The burden lies on us all to unless the potential of the sustainable development goals and to ensure they have the opportunity to do so. John Felix, reporting for Galaxy News. And now away from the